I should say uh, Joe Strummer is going to be our special guest. Uh, what? He's actually, we. it seems like we have him. Well, I just want to say, uh, first things first, it, this is going to be pretty exciting. I know uh, this is somebody who a lot of people consider a, uh, a musical legend of, of our times, and uh, I'm pretty proud to have him on the show. It's, it's very exciting. And uh, he was a uh, definitely one of the most influential musicians and highly regarded uh, songwriters and, and uh, singers and guitarists and uh, leaders of an entire movement, which would be punk rock. And, uh, you know, obviously this band is, is a band that people around here on the station were, were uh, grew up on and considered to be one of the most legendary bands of all time. And uh, in terms of critical acclaim, if that's something you, uh, you, you know, look to for validation, Rolling Stone named London Calling the best album of the 80s. And uh, obviously, this man was responsible, uh, as responsible as anybody, for the greatness that was the band The Clash. And uh, we are joined by the lead singer and rhythm guitarist of The Clash. Um, go ahead, buddy. Are you on the air with me? Hey, Tom, it's Brett Haskins. Brett Haskins? <laughs> I thought... Okay. <laughs> How's it going? Who, who's Brett Haskins? I'm, like you said, I'm the lead singer and rhythm guitarist of The Clash. Okay. I, I thought Joe Strummer was the uh, lead singer and rhythm guitarist of The Clash. No, uh, he, you know, he might have been in the, the, the other Clash. There was a Clash, the Clash that is back now, that, mm -hmm. that uh, you're talking with, uh, Surely you remember uh, a band in the early 70s called Rory and the Clash. Uh, no. I, we I, were I, based... I, I, I'm shocked right now. Well, we were based out of Newbridge. Um, Rory Martini was the founder of Rory and the Clash. Um, I joined the band in early 1972, and I was in from 72 to 76. Uh, uh -huh. Like I said, based out of Newbridge, but we played up and down the shore for years. Uh, we even played in Philly once. Okay. Well, well I, I've got to say, what, what's your name again? Brett Haskins. Brett, um, I, I, I am definitely uh, confused here because I was kind of, I had spoken to a publicist about uh, right, Donna. Do, uh, yeah, we're doing it on uh, and you know, and a phoner with. The uh, you know lead singer and rhythm guitarist of the Clash. That's me. So I vaguely, I have to say, I, I told people Joe Strummer was going to be on the show. Um, was he in the English Clash? Yeah, the, he was in the Clash that everybody knows as the Clash. No, no, no. I think I think if you ask anyone over the age of forty-five who was at the uh, the blues clubs back in the seventies. They'll they'll tell you who the Clash is, and was, and that is Rory and the Clash. So Rory, so I've never heard of Rory and the Clash. Oh. I, I've got to say I feel vaguely, vaguely um, duped here. Well, look, I. I mean, your publicist, it, your uh, your publicist said that this was going to be, and I, I it was just that this was from the. Do you want somebody from the Clash on? You know, the band. Yeah, it was like it turned the world on its ear with with uh, social commentary. That was us. Did you ever hear our uh, our single that came out in '73 called "Blues Patrol"? Or no, the, no, the, I, I've never heard anything about this other clash. What about Mary Lou, the B side? No, I, I honestly have no idea what you're talking about. I mean, this is. Well, what are you talking about? Uh, I'm talking about the band The Clash that was on. Like a you know a major label and that, that, that uh... well we put our own record out back then on uh, on uh, Blues Patrol Records 
Well, you know, I actually own I own the name The Clash in the state of New Jersey. You, how, for, how, how do you own the name The Clash? Well, because we put out that single in 1973. That proves that we were The Clash before the band uh, from the, the 80s called The Clash. Yeah, the, the band from the 80s called The Clash. Well... I, I mean, you have to understand how disappointing this kind of thing is for... Uh, for people who, who, you know, I mean, for me... Well, I I mean, you're, you're actually talking to a blues legend. You're a blues oh, legend. yeah, yeah. Well, see, I know, well, I, mean, I, yeah. know, I know blues music also. I've never heard of Rory and the Clash. You've never heard of Rory DiMartini? No, never. That man was like a father to me. He, uh, he, he took me to my first Slow Hand uh, concert. Your first what concert? Slow Hand. Oh, oh, Clapton. Yeah. yeah, okay. You know, it's a sad thing about Rory that he can't actually be here right now. What what happened with well, Rory? He's, he's, he's actually on. he's actually in the uh, witness relocation program. Well, so the guy who was in the band with you is now in the witness relocation oh, program. Oh, please, the guy who formed the band, he he was the Clash. Rory D. Martini. Yes. Uh huh. So he actually had the misfortune of. Uh, being present when a uh, a heavy mob hit went down, okay, in the uh, in the mid nineties, and he saw uh, one of these mob guys uh, basically just slice another guy to pieces. Okay, what uh, in the back room of a club or ex- something? Exactly, exactly. Uh-huh. So he's he's a uh, you know he he's elsewhere right now. I believe he's actually living in a town called uh, Rudsdale, Oregon, or something. It's a really small town. Uh, under the name of, like, Dan Phelps, or I, I believe, is, is what he's going under now. So, uh, you just... Uh, I mean, oh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, yeah, wait, wait. I think that's that's pretty bad, what you just oh, did. Oh, jeez. Um, I mean, you just said the guy lived in a small town in Oregon, um, and you gave the name... Well, that I, didn't, I, well, I didn't say Oregon, did I? No, I didn't mean Oregon at all. Well, you, you look... No, I think it's Idaho. Okay. Any, a, anyway, getting uh-huh. back to the band. Uh huh. We were awesome. You know, we're actually back now. We had our first show uh, this past weekend. The Clash are back. Yep. Ro- now, are you billed? Like, if I'm going to see Rory and the Clash, I mean, do I? No, it's it's no, it's not Rory and the Clash. Rory. Rory's name is no longer in the in the bill, so it's just the Clash. So you guys actually play shows as The Clash. Hey, the first show sold out in five minutes. <laughs> I'm sure it did. Where was it? A club called Chasers in Tribridge. Uh huh. Ch- and and how and and then that must have been that must have gone over. Uh, that must have gone over spectacularly. Dave, can I? Um, can you look <laughs> on the computer and see if you can find anything about? I just want to see what people thought about this show. Yeah, I haven't seen press from for the show uh-huh. yet, but I'm sure it's going to be going to be sparkling. Uh huh. Yeah. Now I, you have to understand, though, that this is a vague. If you're just going to bill yourselves as the Clash now, people well, that's what we are people, legally. League, okay. You legally are the Clash in what capacity? You are allowed to. In, we're allowed to perform around the entire Garden State as the Clash. I'm not sure what's going to happen. Recording-wise, we have actually have a, have a record coming out uh, uh, soon uh, uh-huh. called uh, "Back Into Combat." Back into combat. Yeah. Now, what you, which, which this actually leads to a point I'd I'd love to find more about. If you are the Clash right. now, right. the Clash, there's no mention that it's not the the Clash that that pretty much everyone would know. Now, I. Now you're you're would, pl- would, yes go ahead you, please uh, you're gonna play around as the Clash we are yes yeah and uh, you don't see that there should be, that that's that some people could consider that a vague ripoff not at all I mean un- unfortunately um, there are a lot of people that only know of you know the the band that was in the 80s called the Clash and um, I'll tell you. When I heard that there was a band called The Clash in 1983, I, I, I was livid. I mean, these guys were sullying the name of The Clash, and I, I, I was furious. I, I mean, 
You ask anyone, like I said, over the age of 45 who the Clash is in New Jersey, and they'll tell you it's the premier blues rock band in the state. Yeah, and uh, okay, so anyone over 45, I would even doubt that at this point. Though. Well, anyway, those guys, the English band, yeah, they use the name and they made a little bit of noise, but you know, but their time's over. We're back. So you're back now. So the, you guys the consider... original Clash is back. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. No, it's I... funny. We actually do a couple of their songs. Uh huh. You you actually do a couple of their songs. Yeah, we do a few of them. But uh, but you 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 claim to have nothing in common with them. Well, you know, I mean, truth I... be told, you know, a lot like you said, a lot of uh, a lot of young kids, and and this is the crime of the century, as far as I'm concerned. They've never heard of Rory. So yeah, we do have to play a couple of the the other Clash's songs just to like, just to get the to get their attention. I mean, it's it's like putting putting medicine in candy to get the kids to to have the medicine. I mean, you know, we got to school the kids in the in the blues rock. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, so so you take this as like a, an educational experience? Yeah, it's like we uh, you know we come out and we'll play uh, should you stay or go, and then we'll hit, then we'll hit him with uh, Daddy's Walking Blues. So you play should you stay or, or or go right, and then you'll do that. So what what Clash songs can we look for from r the Clash? This, uh, we do uh, brand new Cadillac. I thought the law. Uh, Would you stand by me? And uh, should you stay or go? It sounds like you. Uh, we also do a lot of other covers too. Sure, like what what covers? Well, we you know we do uh, songs by Stevie Ray. B.B. King, uh, some early Stones, uh, some of the more bluesy Phil Collins numbers. Uh huh. Yeah, those bluesy Phil Collins numbers. Yeah. But we got yeah. a ton of originals too. Uh huh. Yeah. Like, what's uh, what's your best original cut? Well, um, there's a song that I I wrote with um, with our harmonica player Dell in mind. Um, it's he just had a kid, and it's called New Daddy Blues. Mm -hmm. We got one called uh, Jenny Lynn, uh, still rocking the Casbah. Uh, Boogie Boy, going down to the crossroads. Uh, we got a, a new one called London, still burning with blues. So uh, this is uh, you're 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 kind of talking out of both sides of your mouth here, uh, Brett. You're claiming that that you're disgraced by you feel that the clash that everyone knows yeah was a disgrace. Well, they stunk. Well, I guess they didn't stink enough for you not to name. Uh, for you not to be threading through, what was that record called? You, you still rocking the Casbah, right? So you see nothing wrong with with cashing in on elements of the Clash. Uh, well, I mean, you could say it's also like cashing in on "Rockin' in the Free World" by Neil Young because it's got the word "rockin'" in it. Well, you're not calling yourself, you're not billing yourself Neil Young. No. But you're calling yourself the Clash. That's what we are. But so why are you playing songs by the band The Clash? that you claim you have nothing but disdain for. Well, like I said, you know, some of the kids want to, God knows why, want to hear that stuff. I mean, you know... Um, oh, so you're just trying to make them happy. Exactly. It's just about pleasing the fans and then turning them on to the blues. So why are you holding on to the name The Clash, then, so passionately, since it's been redefined, obviously, to mean something else entirely? Oh, I don't... I disagree completely. Oh, I ha I'm, uh, please explain this. How, do you, how, how how can you tell me that that you, the name The Clash means anything other than the four British guys playing? Well, Tom, if if you saw that show the other night, you would agree. Mm -hmm. it, it would make everything clear. Well, let me just say I am joined by uh, <laughs> I'm joined by Brett. Is it Brett Haskin? Brett Haskins. Yeah, I'm joined by Brett Haskins, who is. The guitarist and singer for a band, The Clash, which are not... I was told, everybody, I was going to have on the rhythm guitarist and lead singer of The Clash. So, obviously, I assumed I was going to have on Joe Strummer, which apparently is not the case. Uh, this is a guy who claims the, that based on some loophole, I guess is what you'd best call it, to still own the name The Clash from before the British uh, punk band even came about way before way way before but but you're you're saying that that music stunk 
Yeah. You, you think that the the clash stunk? I yeah. I mean, what I've heard. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just it's just kind what, of. What have you heard, by the way? Um, if you, don't mind. you know, I, I've heard those songs that we cover. Um, um, my son burned me a, a CD off the internet of uh, some of their songs. You know, there's no blues to it. I, I, I you know, it, it stinks. It's well, like noise. Well, there is no blues to it. I mean, they're not a blues band. Well, I, I mean, so so you don't even you you didn't even see fit to go research this band, The Clash. You know, I you know, has has the original band, the actual Clash, the original Clash, been in touch with you guys to like tell you not to do this or? Um, Donna got an email or something from someone with a crazy name, like uh, Cosmo or something. Uh huh. There was it like their manager. Oh uh, well, yeah, I don't know. Old but, manager. Um, you know, but we got you know we got it in our corner. We've been around before, and uh, you know. Uh huh. Now, how does this work? Um, in an illegal capacity? How? Well, I like mean, I said, you know, they, I'm, I'm not sure how it'll work with the record. You know, yeah. When we put out back, back into combat, which is coming out soon, and I should mention that I, it's produced by uh, Martin Schultz, who I'm sure you know of. Who's Martin Schultz? Well, he he was the bass player in Teaser, which of course was John Cafferty's first band. Oh, okay. So he was in Te. Gee, I I, I can't believe I, I yeah. didn't know Teaser. Yeah. Now, uh, you, what was the name of your record again? Back into Combat. Back into Combat. Yeah. See, now you, you have to admit you're you're playing a game where you're pretty much duping people into thinking this is the Clash. Well, I don't see how you. How, what I mean by Combat is blues combat, hand to hand blues. Blues Warfare. Blues Warfare, which yeah. is something that everyone oh, yeah. goes on about. So you're doing Still Rockin' the Casbah. Still Rockin' the Casbah, Jenny back, Lynn. Back into combat. Right. You had, Did you say something about London? London's still burning with blues, yes. Uh-huh. Now, what would make you write a song like that? Uh, it just came to me. Have you been to England? Uh, no, I've never been overseas. Mm-hmm. But you saw nothing wrong with playing with. Obviously, you're playing with British imagery now because you're. We do play behind uh, in front of a Union Jack, yes. So you play your blues music in front of a Union Jack. Well, that's where the blues blues rock, uh, in its truest sense, was birthed. Mm-hmm. Oh, it, 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 but it, see, I, I have to say, I'm very exasperated by this because it feels like. It just feels like a complete hoodwinking. Well, all I can say is, if you saw us play the other night, you'd be so impressed. I mean, I'm sure it was. It's not at all like seeing the other Clash back back in their time, mm -hmm. which I, I've heard was just dreadful. Okay. Well, Dave, did you find anything? Yeah. Okay. Can you can you print it out for me? Sure. Thanks. So we actually might have some uh, some oh, press okay. on you guys okay. or something. Dave's yeah. Dave's. Uh, so, d did you ever see the Clash, the other Clash back then? I never saw them live. Yeah. But uh, I guess I, I, you know, I could see myself having been duped into seeing this Clash. Yeah. See, I never, I never saw them. You know why? Why? Because I was rocking myself five, five nights a week. Uh huh. In the early '80s, and uh, I was in a band called Blues Express back then. Blues Express. Yeah, we did Slow Hand, uh, T Birds, uh, Robin Trower. So I, I didn't really get to hear any, any, any of their stuff back then. But I, I'll tell you what. What's that? If uh, if you were in a band back then and you had short hair, yeah, that meant that you were pitching for the other team. If you know what I mean. Uh, why don't you explain that? Well, you know, you know, we didn't really think too highly of those uh, those punk bands like The Police or uh, Men at Work or Eddie Grant. Yeah, those punk bands, they yeah. were pretty outrageous, huh? You know, I, I guess a lot of people wouldn't exactly consider uh, the police to be punk rock. Well, they were. I guess, uh, so I guess you can take it upon yourself to define punk. Uh, how about if I define blues a certain way? Well, I guess I guess all bets are off since you are, since the Clash are now a blues band. See, it sounds like you got an axe to grind with me. I, 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 just, well, don't, I, I just don't get it. I think it's a complete rip-off what you're doing. 
I don't think so at all. You don't think it's a ripoff? You tell that to the 500 people that uh, were waiting outside of our show the other night, you know, from the early morning. Uh huh. Is that the show in uh, Tribridge? Exactly. Chasers? Yeah. Well, uh, thank you. Dave just handed me a review of it. Well, you got press from, already. Great, uh -huh. great. From the New Jersey Music Connection. I'll, t I'll tell Donna to look for this and we can put it in our, uh, well, our press kit. Here we go. I'm going to read a little bit of this, great. okay? You want to hear a little bit of your sure. exciting I, press? I'd, I'd love to. Uh, Tribridge, New Jersey Club Chasers should be taken to court <laughs> for last night's Return of the Clash show. There have been rumors that the Clash, Joe Strummer, Mick Jones, Paul Simonon, and Topper Heaton, Hedden Heaton, would be, uh, which, that's the Clash that everybody knows. Uh. There was rumors that they would be reuniting since the 90s, but they have come to naught. So you can imagine how excited New Jersey Clash fans were when it was announced that the band's classic lineup. So you called, you build this as a classic lineup. Well, sure. The classic lineup of the Clash. Well, uh, I, you know, okay, that that was fudged a little bit. I, mm -hmm. I'm the only original guy from uh, Rory and the Clash. Yeah. That's uh huh. True. So oh. that was a lie. So sue me. So oh, so so you think that everybody would be mad saying, "Hey, I came here to see the Clash, and I'm mad because." Sure, there's Brett Haskins, but I don't even know what the name of someone from Rory in the Clash would be. Well, we got Jake Phelps on guitar. Okay. Uh, Mike Barnett on bass. Mm hmm. Dale Givens, like I mentioned, he's on harp. Uh, Carol Gonzanelli, she's on keyboards. And uh, Fred Lorenzo is uh, laying it down on, on the drums. And, so, and myself. So you think that somebody's going to come and say, hey, uh,. Who's Fred Lorenzo? He wasn't in the original Rory in the Clash. You think that's what people are going to be mad about? Hey, nobody was mad. People were getting off on that show. Uh -huh. Read on, read on. Yeah, please. Okay, so you can imagine how excited New Jersey Clash fans were when it was announced the band's classic lineup, which played its last show in May of 1982, would be kicking off its Back Into Combat tour right here in New Jersey. That's so right. you, you build this as a tour. we got tons of shows coming up all throughout the, the uh, state. Mm-hmm. It only took a handful of posters, complete with the jagged logo from the band's first album. So, so you actually took the the logo off the actual the Clash that you hate so much. You saw no no reason not to use their logo. We didn't use their logo. Um, I I could see where someone, if they saw it from, I don't know, uh, more than you know, two feet away, they would think that. But if you look real close. Our logo was way more rounded. It wasn't really that jagged. Oh, so so you just now are, are splitting hairs, though. No, no, no. Uh -huh. Read on, read on. So, oh, absolutely. So I'm sorry, sir. So it, the complete with the the, uh, the handful of posters, complete with the jagged logo from the band's first album, hung up around town to ensure an instant sellout. Kids started lining up around Chasers at six uh, six o'clock on Saturday morning. Yes, they did. In an effort to guarantee the best possible spot. Yes, they did. By 11 p.m., after an interminable set by Bay Ridge Rockers, the Party Patrol, the house lights came down. The familiar sounds of Tennessee Ernie Ford's 16 tons, the band's intro music on the London Calling Tour, filled the club as the band took the stage in total darkness. This is just insane. I can see, you know... You know there were there was a moment of absolute ecstasy as the first notes of the band's cover of Vince Taylor's brand new Cadillac were laid into. <laughs> you, this is this is the most corrupt thing I've ever heard in my life. You should just be ashamed of yourself that you would ever do something this corrupt. You actually are opposing as another band going on stage doing the songs by someone else. I mean, you're doing the cover that. Uh, Hello? It was great. You're doing a strategic Clash cover, right? That's that, an old song. Yeah, it's, it's an, an old song, song so it's not a Clash. Uh -huh. They oh. happen to do it, and, and so do we. But when the stage lights came up, I'm back in the article now, ecstasy turned to shock. Oh, boy, there's a shock. People couldn't that, believe how good it was. You could feel the wheels turning inside the heads of all 500 rabid Clash fans. This is just... This is killing me. I mean, who could not have seen it going this way? But you're going to tell us that this is just a positive show, that everybody just loved what they saw. You could feel the wheels turning inside the heads of all 500 rabid Clash fans 
as we asked ourselves the following questions. Now, the writer has uh, taken it upon himself, it's upon himself to list these questions. Okay. Since when did The Clash have six members, and is it possible they've aged so horribly? Oh, that's so, low. That's <laughs> low. So I can just imagine what you look like, bro. Well, you know, it's funny that I mentioned that thing about guys having short hair back then and uh, thinking they were fruity. Well, uh, joke's on me. I don't have any hair anymore. So, yeah, so I guess that's... Uh, yeah, and, uh, you know, yeah. I'm sure. Can I take a guess, though, now, Brett? I'm going to go out on a limb now. Okay. Do you have a beard? I do. Is it long? It's longish. Is it bushy? It's a little bushy. Is it ill-kept? I wouldn't say that. It's certainly not trim. Mm -hmm. Are you fat? Define fat. Are you over 300 pounds? No. Are you over 280 pounds? Yes. Okay. Here's another... Okay, here's... Let's get back to this article. Since when did The Clash have a female keyboardist? So that's you have a female keyboardist in the group. That's Carol. She's great. Mm -hmm. She used to play at the, uh, uh, the Ramada. I'm sure she in, did. Um, in actually, in East uh -huh. Orange. And, and did she play at the Ramada under the name, like, The Stranglers or The Sex Pistols? What does that mean? Well, those are other punk bands that uh, would probably... Yeah, see, like I said, we didn't listen to that garbage. Mm -hmm. Since when did The Clash have a beret-wearing harmonica player? That's Bill. Were they always this fat, which actually I just asked you, and... So the writer asked if you were always this fat. Well, uh, if the clash were always, you this know, fat. time goes on and uh, you know things things fall. <laughs> My gut being one of them. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, you know what else should fall? What? Your uh, ability to play around New Jersey as the clash. Well, that's one man's opinion. Go on, go on. I'll hear okay, more I'll please. As the band launched into what appeared to be a new song, apparently titled Down and Dirty, yeah. the most important question of all was asked. You ready for this? I imagine it's something like, w where can I buy this uh, song? Who do I see about getting my money back? Oh, uh, what? This person's got an agenda. Yes, folks, there is a band calling themselves The Clash out there. They are not The Clash, though. If you like The Clash, the only band that matters, don't go see this monstrosity. But if you do like ham-fisted blues rock sung by a bearded, pot-bellied man in his late 60s, are you in your 60s? See, I take offense with that because I'm only 50 years old. Well, if you take, if you like ham-fisted blues rock sung by a, po a bearded, pot-bellied man in his late 60s, then go see these imposters. Late 60s, see, that, that's... This person needed to get uh, their eyes checked and ears because uh, people love that show. So at that show, yeah. were people mad? Were people storming around? Uh, like how? Here's a question for you: How many people right. were in the club after you? Uh, after uh, 15 minutes of the set? Uh, probably. There were still a lot, I, I, I must say. Um, they weren't actually facing the direction of the stage, but there were probably about 400 still left, yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, hey, here's an email. Jason sending in an email. Uh, he says, about time someone remembered this clash. That's right. The only band in New Jersey that matters. Well, I would love to, uh, I would love to know how many people did ask for their money back. From this show? Um, well, in all honesty, a lot did, but the, uh, the reason... Well, that... out of the 500, give me a uh, give me a ballpark figure. How many people asked for a refund? It was about 500, but um, the reason being was apparently uh, that uh, they were going to do some heavy... Begin some heavy construction, uh, road work, uh, 
on the highway r- right by the club, and um, it was going to start about halfway into our set, so everyone needed to to get on the highway to get home, so they wouldn't get stuck in traffic. Oh, that that yeah, that sounds pretty. Uh, that sounds like what it was. It had nothing to do with the fact that you were up there playing mm-hmm. this band of six people trying to pass themselves off. Obviously trying to pass. So you go on stage to 16 Tons. A great song, yeah. Yeah, and who, who came up with the idea for you to go on stage to that? Uh, that was actually my idea. And where did you get that idea? I don't know. It just came to me. It just came to you. Yeah. Has nothing to do with that. So that was the music that the actual British band, The Clash, walked out on stage to. Oh, oh is that right? I didn't know that, no. I should say you are listening to WFMU East Orange, WXHD Mount Hope Worldwide on the Internet at WFMU.org. I am joined on the phone by Britt. Is it Britt or Brett? It's Brett Haskins. Brett Haskins, who uh, is the lead singer and guitarist of a band, The Clash, but not The Clash that you think, everybody. It's, it's hey, the... don't, don't put words into their mouths. Maybe uh-huh. they do think that it is the original Clash. Hey, you know what? They're welcome to call up. 201-200-9368. I'd love to hear if people are into this. Maybe I'm what? Maybe I'm in the minority on this one. You know what I'd love to do? What? Talk about what's in the future for the, the uh, Clash. Okay. Well, like I said, we got the uh, Back Into Combat album coming out. Okay, Back Into Combat is yeah, coming out. Yeah, um, hoping to get some t-shirts uh, made up soon. Okay. And, um... Well, like, what would these t-shirts look like? They'd Do you have probably any? be, uh, like, Army Fatigue, you know, Olive Drab, uh, and, you know, say The Clash, probably have, like, a star on it or something. Maybe almost in, like, the, uh, like, it's some sort of military writing, you know, like, almost like a... a like a, a a medal, you know, that you would get in the service, that sort of thing. And what gave you this idea? Oh, it just came to me. It just came to you. Well, it kind of goes with the whole back into combat. Uh, and where did you get that idea from? Uh, to, you know, I was just thinking, you know, how how the blues rock is not really what it used to be, and we need to go and slug it out with, uh, you know, wh- whoever's making records now and bring bring blues rock back. Mm-hmm. So you know, we're also hoping to get on some of these uh, Robert Cray dates. Okay, Robert. When is Robert Cray playing? He, he's he's actually going to be playing some shows in the uh, uh, down in Delaware and uh, Harrisburg, PA. Uh, but you know, it all hinges on whether or not we, I can get off work. Oh, I. You know what I hope is that you. Uh, yeah, I hope I can. Well, I hope you play these shows because uh, then hopefully you can get uh, arrested. What? What does that mean? Because you're you're playing out as uh, the Clash. Well, yeah. Well, you uh, didn't you say you can only do it in New Jersey? <laughs> well, um, by then I think everything will be straightened out. My um, my my brother is a lawyer, and he he's on the case, so it, it shouldn't be long before we're we're known uh, nationwide as the Clash. And uh, our big dream is to get on this uh, like kind of an, a nationwide country fair circuit. Mm-hmm. That'd be great. Wow, that would be some yeah. dream. That's oh, a- also uh, for your listeners who want to uh, check it out. Uh, my son uh, wanted me to give you the uh, it's it's the web address of uh, of our, our of the official Clash site that, that's going to be up in a couple weeks. Okay. Okay. Now I don't have a computer, so I don't really know what all this gobbledygook is here, but I'll give it a shot. Okay. Okay. Uh, HTTP uh, colon line line www.geocities.com slash uh, rhaskins slash clash attack slash 1278 slash blues power slash 8 dot clsh slash combat dot html Wow! So yeah. you you literally have done as much of a, a, a an attempt to associate yourselves right. with tricking people into thinking. Not at all. Not at all. And the big that is impressive. No, well, you know, you know about the political uh, 
music that The Clash was known for back, back in my day. But we're back doing it again. We got some, some heavy uh, numbers. Mm -hmm. We got one called These Colors Don't Run. These Colors Don't Run. Yeah. And what is that? That is uh, what that is obviously a patriotic tune. You, oh, yeah, you got it. Uh-huh. Yeah. Do you know that song called, uh, that old song from back in my day, uh, Telegram Sam? Yeah, the T-Rex song, right? Yeah, we have a new version of it that we just did, and we, and we uh, recorded it. It's really great. How's that go? Taliban Sam. Taliban Sam. Yeah. We're trying to get it on uh, Opie and Anthony. Okay, you're trying to get it on Opie and Anthony. Yeah, can you help me out with that? Probably not. I can tell you, though, that somebody is calling. Okay. They want to talk to... Uh... Hello? FMU, you're on the air. Yeah, is this guy joking? I mean, come on. If I went to a show to go... I'm a fan of The Clash. If I went to go see The Clash and I saw these guys, I would definitely want my money back. Wouldn't you be mad? I would be pissed. No, I mean, you wouldn't because can't... you'd be in Blue's Paradise. Can't these guys get sued for copyright infringement? No, like I said, we own it. We own the name so far in New Jersey because we had a record out in New Jersey before the the English band uh, from the 80s did. But still, you're kind of still, like, riding them. You should maybe just change your name out of respect since they're, like, you know, like, I, you may have seniority, but they have, you know, they have that name. They are The Clash. You guys are just some guys back in the day called The Clash. Maybe you should name your band The Clash in New Jersey or something. No, so I'd rather don't... not because they got these shirts already on the way, and I don't want to have to press up more. Come on, man. You got shirts on the way. Yeah. I, I mean, you're just looking to make a buck. I thought music's all about making music, not making money. Hey, it is. I mean, and we're, and we're doing both, fortunately. You know, we got... Uh, oh, we're... absolutely. But come on, man. Uh, how pissed would you be if you, like, went to go see The Grateful Dead and it was a, like a, a freaking stupid... Death metal band or something. Yeah. Well, I, th I, I yeah, think exactly. I, I'd go into it with an open mind. Hey, how about here's one? How about if here's one? Put put this, uh, uh, Brett. Think about this. I'm going in to go see somebody billed as BB King, right? The master, yes. And all of a sudden, I walk in, and all of a sudden, I hear, uh, ladies and gentlemen, over the PA, I hear, ladies and gentlemen, the one and only BB King will be out on the stage shortly. Yeah. And all of a sudden you hear like the you hear just even like a teaser just like you guys do you hear like the strains of like the thrill is gone or some horrible blues yeah. song. Horrible. What? And then but then who comes out on stage? <laughs> who comes out on stage but a punk band comes yeah. out and they play just a I, straight have you guys of punk. Ever been by the audience? Well like we've only done that one show so far and uh I wouldn't say we were mauled. I mean like I said, by by 15 minutes in, there were still 400 people, but they were facing the other direction. There was a little bit of a log jam, I guess, because, yeah. like I said, there was no <laughs> instruction going on. That okay. Like, What's going? That guy's that? phone is. Uh... See, it sounds like he's he's on that and he's near that construction too. Two zero one two hundred nine three six eight is the number. I've got Brett Haskin. Let me tell you about our other phone. Okay, from the Clash, or uh, you know, apparently legally. They are the Clash in New Jersey That's right. now. That's right. So please go ahead. Tell us what the future of the Clash holds for all of us. This is probably the greatest song you'll ever hear. It's got okay. everything. Okay. Okay. Do you know that song, Fifty Ways to Leave Your Lover? Yeah. This song is called Fifty Ways to Kill Bin Laden. All right. How, and how how does that go? You just chop off his head, Fred. Stab him in the back, Jack. Tear off his toes, Joe. Da -da -da -da, just listen to me. Do you love it? Oh, yeah, that sounds great. When it comes out, it's going to be great. That's probably going to be uh, the, the lead-off track on uh, the album after Back Into Combat. Uh-huh. And what, do you have a, a title for that record yet? Jeez. Uh... Hey, maybe you want to call that one Sandinista 2. I don't know what that means. But I, I was thinking about call, having it... Uh, New Jersey calling or something like that. New Jersey. Yeah, it's call like a wake-up call to, to to America to show them what's going on in in our, in our state. And uh, how did that title New Jersey calling? Uh, let me guess, it came to you. Yeah, it did actually. It yeah, just it came did. to you. Yes. Oh. Either that or um, Dell was toying with a uh, title. 
uh, called um, something like More Rope. More Rope, yeah. Adele. Well, so you, Adele, is probably checking out Amazon.com to see the titles of Clash albums. Oh, you should be ashamed uh, of yourself. No, well, it looks like I'm, I'm not going to. I'm not going to convince you of anything. Uh, well, so uh, it looks like you're not. I have one other person who wants to ask you a question. All right. FMU, you're on the air. Oh, it's me again. Well, what's up? It's Aaron. I don't know what happened. Your you phone now? Yeah. All right, man. You guys have a good night. All right. Peace. Right. Thanks for calling for that. I guess. Come to a show. We're, uh, we're doing a a, um, a show on uh, next next Saturday. We got our our whatever Father's Day is. I'm not even sure what day it is. It's a Sunday, I guess. Yeah. At the Memorial Park Band Shell, uh, in um, East Rutherford. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's going to be an awesome bill. It's going to be us, and uh, the nerds are going to be playing also. Wow. So and you... we got a, a, a thing we're doing, which is great. You can bring in your old... And if they, if they actually are worried that their record collection is too good, right, they can take in, uh, like, a, like their copy of, of uh, you know, uh, Give Them Enough Rope or, or a London Calling, and have it switched for... Back into Combat. Yep. Which is a, a lousy album. Uh, you've never heard it, and I think once you heard it, once you hear the strains of uh, New Daddy Blues, you will have a different tune. And what we're also going to do, and this is exciting, we're going to have a big bonfire where we're going to burn all the all the bad Clash of CDs. Wow. Yeah. And, uh, so you're going to have a bon That's just counting on you getting anyone to show up. To see your horrible band. Oh, you... you. I mean, I'll tell you this right now. No one should see this band. Unless well, they that's... feel like getting ripped off. See, I'm going to sue you now because you're being real derogatory and you're trying to deprive me of making a living. Well, oh, oh, so you have no problem with depriving people of their hard earned money when they show up and just get hoodwinked by you. Oh, they're not hoodwinked at all. They're, they're excited to hear, to be exposed to the blues. Yeah. Well, you know what? Can I tell you something? This might hurt your feelings. That, that, that I can't even believe you don't even understand this. That line you saw when you were playing your your stupid show and you saw everyone's backs. I didn't even want to tell you this until you threatened to sue me. They were leaving the club. Uh, I, if they were leaving, like I said, it's because they wanted to beat that uh, construction that was going up. No, they probably just wanted to beat the horrible sound that they were hearing of, uh, what's that song, New Daddy Blues. New Daddy Blues, or I think by that point we might have been into Still Rockin' the Casbah. By the point you played that. Yeah, I think so. Oh, wow. FM, FMU, you're on the air. Hey, this is Ted Steele. Hey, Ted, I call back in an hour. We're going to do a smash or trash for yeah, you. Yeah, I know, but I just got something to say to this guy. What's that? I don't know, man. It's a little bit of blasphemy here. I mean, the class is one of the most important uh, bands of the late '70s, early '80s, as Thank far you. as the crossover is concerned. From no, he's American, he's, he... uh, you know, music and the British uh, punk movement. For and exactly like, for the blasphemy, I'm a little bit upset. By I mean, he he he's not thanking you. Well, uh, he, he just he just said that we were the best, uh, most influential band, and I appreciate that. That's not what you were saying. He, I think you're more like the ass. Nice. Hey, well, you know, there goes that lawsuit again. Uh, I guess that's going to be a new part of the lawsuit. You're going to, you know, you uh, cursing at me over the phone. So, See? Uh, uh, I so you I'll... just sue everybody when there's a problem. Well, uh, that's what I do. And um, you will be on the receiving end of a... Uh, of some forms uh, in the next few days, so be on the lookout for those. Who will? You will. Me? Oh, me. And your station. Uh, uh, I'll probably get the whole station shut down. Too. I think yeah. we need a boxing tournament where you bring Ted Steele and this loser in, and we do it. We settle it the old-fashioned way. Because Ted Steele actually is in a band called the Ted Steele Band. I love the name. So uh, you, would you be willing, uh, Britt or Brett, to square off against How? Ted Steele? What are your dimensions there, son? I'm about 6'5", 270. Oh, boy. Um, what what kind of... Are we talking boxing or, or some sort of arm wrestling? Because I'm good at that. 
So bo- you're good at boxing. No, 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 no. I'm good at I'm good at arm wrestling. Or he's gone. Oh, he's gone. He well, just hung up on you. Let's work on this. Although I sincerely doubt that you'll be back on the air next week at this time. So. Uh, well, who's, Whoever what's, takes what's, over for you will have to uh, set this up, I guess. Uh huh. Well, you know what I can assume is that hopefully, I know someone at Epic Records. I'm going to co- well, Epic. They used to be at Epic. I guess Epic is part of something else now. I'm going to contact them. Or maybe I'm wrong on that. Is Epic? I think I'm thinking. Yeah, we'd love to get a deal. Thank you. No, I'm not going to get you signed. I'm going to get you shut down. What? What? Why? Because because uh, you guys are a complete travesty. You're ripping people off left and right. Well. We'll just have to agree to disagree on that, but uh, well, I we'll, see who's, we'll see who's, whose career is thriving in, in, uh, in, in six months, okay? Uh-huh. Yeah, well, when you're playing New Daddy Blues uh, in jail, then, uh, then we'll see who gets well, the last laugh. I think, you'll be the, uh, I think you'll be the guy in jail. What was that last thing I just heard? Was that a, was that a possible burp? Yeah, I just took a swig. Wow, you just took a swig. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, you know, you should also... Uh, Take a look in the mirror and realize you're just a complete criminal. Well, um, all I can say is wait till uh, wait till we send you a copy of uh, Back into in the Combat, and uh, I will guarantee you, I'll bet you a hundred dollars. Okay, here's the bet: hundred dollars. Uh, at least five tracks from from uh, Back into Combat are in are in regular rotation uh, in two weeks on your station. At this station, after you said yep. five tracks. Yep. Here's here's a bet I'll make you. We're going five deep. Five people are going to go five cuts deep into yep. the wreck. Here's a bet I'll make you. Okay. I'll bet you fifty thousand dollars. Your band within six months is completely you are you are legally forced to uh, to disband. Let's make it forty thousand, okay? Forty thousand is fine. That's a little more manageable for me, and you are on. Well, you're on, Brett. Okay. Well, and I want to say to anybody listening to this, if you see that the Clash are playing a club in the area, by all means, do not attend the show because you are about to get hoodwinked. Which, actually, we're hoping to get a show, uh, uh, I think, three Tuesdays from now at Scandals, which is in Carteret. So you're hoping for that show. Boy, if you cross your fingers, maybe it'll happen. It's, yeah, it's going to be big. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, I have to tell you, Brett, it has been horrifying. You completely, you and your publicist, well, you completely hoodwinked me into getting you on the air to promote your lousy band. I don't think so. I don't think so. Look, um, I'll talk to you in a few months, I guess, okay? And uh, We'll square off on that bet. Try not to take it bat. too hard. Try not to take what too hard? Your loss. What loss? The, the bet you're going to lose. Oh, the bet I'm going to lose yep. is $40,000. Yep. Hey, try not to take it too hard when you get uh, thrown into jail. Well, we'll see who's uh, who's standing tall. And and you know what? Maybe one of these shows you'll actually get someone who doesn't ask for their money back. I mean, is that something you've thought about? Maybe like a no money back policy? That is actually our new policy, yes. So if I buy a ticket for the show, right. no refunds. That's exactly right, yes. Oh, that's that's charming. Yeah. And it'll, it'll be posted... Um, Somewhere in the club, yes. Yeah. So, so it's in the club after I've already entered and can't get yeah. my money back. Yes, definitely. I mean, we got to be fair about this. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, I could see why you wouldn't want to be fair about it. Oh, you know what? How dare you? That's well, all I say to you. Okay. How well, dare you? Hey, we have something on this show called the Enemies of Tom, right? Right. I am putting you in the ranks of the Enemies of Tom. Hey, why? Why? Because you're you're a crook. No, I'm not. Sure, you are. Well. Brett Haskins, you are an enemy of Tom. Well, screw you, because you're an enemy of the blues. I mean, well, I guess, well, okay, you got me. I'm an enemy of the blues. Yes, you are. Well, you're an enemy of Tom. Well, Goodbye. you can go die then, okay? Oh, well, you well, know what? Right back at well, you, Lord Well, don't be surprised ass. if you get murdered. Right back at you, Lord Ass. Oh, young, and he hangs up. You can go die. Like I said, it's not the show till someone threatens to kill me.